Greetings, everybody. This is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Get your King James Bible out. We're going to flip through Psalms chapter 22 and contrast this with Matthew chapter 27. This is going to be part two of Isaiah 53 although it really doesn't have anything to do with Isaiah 53, but it ties in with Isaiah 53. Now, Psalms 22 was, believe it or not, the lyrics, part of it were lyrics of a song sung by a group called the Guess Who, The song was Hang On to Your Life. And uh, I always admired uh, the skill of the Guess Who's guitarist, Randy Bachman. Eventually, you probably, maybe some of you know him as uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. That was one of my favorite groups in the 70s. And uh, unfortunately, he's a, he was, he's a Mormon. I hope one day he wakes up and discovers that uh, Jesus is not the brother of Satan. That's what the Mormons teach in their doctrines and covenants. I hope he throws the Book of Mormon away and b picks up and believes the King James Bible, but uh, well, we'll see what happens. So, let's read... Psalms 22. I'm going to read the entire chapter and then we're going to go to look up specific instances and then go to Ma uh, Matthew 27 and possibly Mark and Luke. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Verse 1. To the chief musician upon Algelith Shahar, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Isn't that what Christ said on the cross? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusteth in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan, have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. 
and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. Does that sound familiar? They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name upon my brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye the seed of Jacob, Glorify him and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him, the meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. You know that word nations is the same word that they sometimes translate as Gentiles. But in this instance, they're talking about the nations of Israel. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness upon a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. All right, let's read Matthew 27. All right, let's go Matthew chapter 27. Let's start in verse 17. We're going to read this, and then I'll show you the parallel passages. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, the you-know-whos, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. You know, according to legend, Pilate became a Christian. I don't know if it's true or not, but legend records that. We'll find out, won't we? One day. Verse 20. But the chief priests, and these were not Catholic priests, by the way, but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas, the robber, that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. The governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said Barabbas. 
That's who they wanted for their Messiah. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made. What's a tumult? Like a riot. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. And yet every, virtually every single preacher I have ever listened to will tell you that Pilate was guilty of the blood of Christ and that it, washing his hands was a mocking. No. Pilate wanted to release him. Don't believe me? Turn to John 19, 12. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the you-know-whos cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Sorry, I believe the Bible over preachers every single time. All right, let's go back to Matthew 27, verse 25. Then answered all the people, what people? The you-know-whos, and said, His blood be upon us. I'm sorry, His blood be on us and on our children. And yet, everybody blames the Romans. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him and mocked him, saying, Hail, king of the you-know-whos. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled to bear his cross. Why? Probably because he was beaten to a pulp. He probably couldn't carry his own cross anymore. Verse 33, And when they were come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull. Verse 34, They gave him vinegar to drink, to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. See, they for his garments they they, uh, I guess they uh, cut them in pieces between the soldiers, but he had a coat that was woven with no seams, and for that, they cast lots. So where do we see that in Psalms 22? Simple. Verse 18. Psalms 22, 18. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Let's go back to Matthew. 
All right, verse 36. And sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head the, his accusation written, This is Jesus, the king of the you-know-whos. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. Where's the commandion verse in Psalms 22, verse 7? All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusteth on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. Where's the companion verse for that? Well, let's take a look. Well, there's a companion verse in Mark 15, verse 31. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking, said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Is there another companion verse? Oh, yeah. Verse uh, Matthew 27. I guess we'll start back in verse Matthew 27, 37. And set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildeth it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot say, If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Verse 44, the thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Is there a companion verse in Psalms? Oh, yeah. Psalms 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Psalms 22, verse 13. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. Wouldn't that happen if you were crucified? My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. Remember, they took vinegar with gall and tried to give it to him. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Wow. So, verse 46, Matthew 27. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Samak, Lama Sabachthani. Now, this is Hebrew. Some say Aramaic, which is a you know, a dialect of Hebrew. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
Now, if Matthew was written in Hebrew, like all the Hebrew roots people say it was, why is it telling you, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because it wasn't written in Hebrew, otherwise they wouldn't tell you this. He's speaking Hebrew, and they're telling you what it means, because it was written in Greek. And the Greeks would know what Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani means. So they interpret it for them. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then in verse 47, some of them that stood there, when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias. That's not what he said. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And who was standing there? The chief priests and the scribes, the people that supposedly knew Hebrew, and they're saying, this man calleth for Elias. But that's not what he said. And then, you know, what a mess. Verse 48. I don't think, you know, according to some, Hebrew has been dead for a language since, maybe since the return from Babylon. I don't know. Well, not entirely, because the prophets recorded their words in Hebrew. But for the common people, I don't know. Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top, heaven, to the bottom, the earth. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. How about Mark 15, verse 38? And the veil of the temple is rent twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion, a Roman soldier, and when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Even the unbelieving Roman soldiers had more sense than the chiefs, priests, and the scribes, and the Pharisees. All right, everybody, that's the end of this lesson. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.